My name's Daver, and in this video, I make cedar planters three different ways as a beginner, intermediate, and pro woodworker. Stick around, this is Daver Made. Thanks for checking out this video and for checking out my channel. If you're not subscribed, please do so now and share this video with a friend. It means a lot to me and really helps this channel out. For this video, I make a seemingly small and simple project at three levels of woodworking. And I also use tools that would be similar to what someone would have at each skill level. Honestly though, this could vary because there's nothing that stops you from buying a $3,500 three horsepower cabinet saw on the first day you start woodworking. Additionally, I make two planners at each skill level and finish them two different ways. So if you do the math correctly, in this video, I'm going to make a total of six cedar planters. These planters can be used indoors or outdoors, and you can use real or fake succulents like I have in my demo pieces. All right, enough talking, let's get into the video. For this skill level of cedar planter, I'm using a 4x4 cedar post that I picked up at my local home center. This board is S4S, which means that it's surfaced on four sides. Purchasing boards that are S4S is good if you don't have access to a planer or a jointer, and it will also help me cut down the amount of sanding I will need to do to finish this project. Now for the first planter that I'm cutting, I'm using a handsaw and a speed square to kind of keep my, my saw cut straight. Um, I, I did okay. This handsaw is extremely cheap. You can get it at your local home center or a variation. For the second one, I decided to use my miter box and a clamp just to kind of hold it down and hold it steady. While cedar is a soft wood, my saw is pretty dull, so it took me some time to get through the cut. The combination of having a dull blade and not using a hand tool in a while left my cuts less than square. So I had to square them up and to do this, especially as a beginner, I used an orbit sander. That's what you would do, right? If you only had a few tools. So that's kind of the rules I set for myself and it took some time, but using a uh, lower grit sandpaper, um, I did what I could. Now this causes a lot of dust, so make sure you're using proper PPE. I eventually hooked up my shop vac to my sander just because the dust was out of control doing this. Once I got the planter somewhat square, I started going through the grits and also rounding over the edges to give it a nice profile. The good thing about these planters is that you don't need precise tools to make them look good. I wanted to have a natural look to these cedar planters and using the tools that I had accomplished that. Using a speed square, I marked the center where I was going to drill in the hole. Now I'm using my old plug-in Ryobi drill. If you have this drill, comment below and let me know. It is very reliable. I've had it forever. And I'm using this because when I was a beginner, this was the tool that I had and used. Now for drilling out the hole in the planter, I'm using a two inch Forstner bit. Now you can pick these up at your local home center. This is a Diablo Forstner bit, I believe. And I'm also using some poplar calls with some squeeze clamps to keep this steady so it doesn't spin around on me. One thing to keep in mind is you can torque your wrist doing something like this, so be very careful. You don't wanna sprain or break your wrist. And always remember, safety first. Now all the hard parts are done with these planters, so it's just the monotony of finish sanding everything down. Now before sanding with my last grit, I sprayed the planter down to raise the grain so it gets all those fuzzy fibers up. So when I sand with my last grit, it'll knock all those down. So hopefully the next time it comes in contact with water, it'll feel nice and smooth. Now to clean off all the dust to prepare it for finish, I use some mineral spirits. Once the mineral spirits dried, it was ready for finish. Now I'm going to finish one of these planters using Walrus Oils Cutting Board Oil. This is a natural 
finish, it's food safe. Not that you're gonna be eating out of these planters. I mean, I guess you could. You could put cereal or M&Ms or something in it, but this finish is very easy to use. You just simply put it on and then over the next few hours, you let it soak in and within, uh, I think, 24 hours, you wanna wipe off any excess. Super easy finish to use and it looks great. And for the second planter, I'm not going to add any finish to it. Cedar's a really good rot and bug resistant wood. It's used a lot for outdoor furniture and other projects that are outside and I'm just gonna leave it as is. For just using a few basic tools, I was surprised how good these turned out. I definitely think that this is a project that somebody could do that has not acquired a lot of skills yet and they can make something that looks nice. And here's a recap of all the tools and supplies that I used for this level of cedar planter. For the next skill level of cedar planter, I will also be using the 4x4 S4S cedar post. However, instead of sawing the planters by hand, I'm going to be using a miter saw. I'm also putting a stop block on the miter saw so I can cut each planter at the same size. And you may notice that I have blue painter's tape wrapped around the post where the cut is going to be. That is to help prevent tear out. When making a cut through something this thick, I'm going to take multiple passes. It is not recommended to do this in one go. Once my pieces are cut, the next step is to find the center point so I can drill in the hole for where the plant will go. Now for this skill level, instead of a hand drill, I'm gonna use a drill press. I picked this drill press up from Harbor Freight. It's a central machinery one. I think I got it on sale for like around $120. I believe you can get one that is comparable at around 150 right now. I'm using the same technique of holding the piece in place. If anybody has a better suggestion, please let me know. Um, I might be overthinking how I held this down, but it works pretty well. Once the holes were drilled in the planters, it was time to start sanding. And I'm using the same clamp your orbit sander to the table technique that I had before. Again, if you have a shop vac, I highly recommend connecting it. Now for this level of planter, I was gonna leave the shape pretty square and the other one I wanted to kind of shape. So what could you do without a router? Now I know not everybody has a disc sander or a, uh, a belt sander like this. Um, this is a fairly inexpensive tool. You can get them on sale. Um, but if you did have something like this and not a router table, which I don't know, naturally I picked up a router table first, but if you wanted to shape your planter, you could use a disc sander like this. So I decided to sand in the shape and just kind of wing it as uh, I went along here. So just coming up with something, no plan, just kind of getting a feel for it. Took some time and I went through some sanding discs. While not perfect, I think the shape turned out very nice and I was gonna do a little bit more to it to kind of smooth out the edges and the lines on it. It still felt a little inorganic to me. Once again, I am raising the grain using some water before I do my finish sanding. And then just kind of changing the grits and sanding by hand. And for one of the planters, I'm gonna use just Walrus Oil's Pure Tongue Oil. Tongue Oil is very good for outdoor projects and it's very easy to apply. Very similar to the other Walrus Oil cutting board oil. Just let it soak in and then in the next 24 hours or so you can wipe off the excess and it provides very good protection. This has a really nice darkened natural look and brings out that grain in the cedar. Now for the second cedar planter I was going to try something I've never done before and that is burning the wood to add the protection and this is known as yakisugi forgive me for pronunciation and it is a traditional Japanese technique for wood preservation. I know it is also referred to as Shoshugiban. I believe that is incorrect but I'm not exactly sure why it is. It could be a translation issue. 
Now, in between burning the wood on the outside, I'm using a wire brush to kind of brush off all the charring. And I repeated the process until I was happy with the look and color. And for added protection, I'm also going to use tongue oil on this planter. I think that the tongue oil really brings out the contrasting colors between the cedar and the charring and it gives it a really nice look. And then 24 hours later, I just wiped off the excess and this had a really nice matte finish to it. Now I know you don't necessarily need to have average woodworking skills. A beginner could make this project, but just with the tools that I incorporated is why I would put this at the intermediate level. And I really liked how these planters turned out. And here's a recap of all the tools and supplies that I used for this level of cedar planter. For the last skill level of cedar planters, I'm going to use rough sawn cedar. Rough sawn cedar is a lot cheaper, but requires a lot more milling. However, at this level, I'm gonna be using my table saw, my jointer, planer, and band saw. Now, one thing to keep in mind is make sure you always change out your dust collection. Always happens at the best time. Now, this rough sawn cedar had some splitting in it um, after I'd let it dry um, fully in my shop for a while and luckily I resawed it to avoid those splits in the wood. And I'm gonna resaw it into multiple pieces and then glue it all together. Um, there was also a really bad split that I had just cut out with the bandsaw. So that leaves me with three good pieces to use that I could run through the jointer and the planer. Once everything was nicely planed and jointed, it was time to rip them to the final width on my table saw. Now, it's funny how I mentioned that this is the professional level. I wouldn't call myself a professional. I'm more of a semi-pro, if that, but just based on the overbuilding of a cedar planter in this uh, skill level and the amount of tools that I incorporated, it's why I labeled this the professional level. After ripping them to their final width, um, I did notice that there was some pretty bad snipe on the end of one of the boards from my planer, so I just cut that off. And now it was time for the glue up. Since these will be exposed to water, I'm using Type Bond 3, and I'm just going to glue all three boards together. After letting it sit overnight, I undid it from the clamps and then proceeded to scrape off as much glue squeeze out as I could before running it over the jointer. Once it was all cleaned up, I took it to the miter saw and squared off the edge. Now I know that a professional woodworker would probably not use a miter saw due to the accuracy of it and would use a table saw instead. However, I'm not actually professional yet and I was lazy, so I just used my miter saw. Again, I'm using a stop block here to make sure that my cuts are the exact same as I make multiple planters out of this one block of wood. I'm also using blue tape again to prevent tear out. And here's a good example of a block without using tape and one with. Then as with all previous levels of planter, I am finding the center. However, I'm using a center hole punch for this one, just to make it a little bit easier for the Forstner bit to get in there. I guess you could use this at any level. Uh, I just forgot to do it. So a professional wouldn't forget to do it, I guess. So it fits. Now for the profile on this, I'm gonna be running it over the router table with a chamfer bit. And I'm only doing this on the bottom because I think it really looks cool and kind of gives the illusion that it's floating off whatever surface it is resting on. Then it was on to the sanding process, which is just so enjoyable to watch. So I'm gonna make you watch the whole thing in real time. I'm just kidding, I'm gonna speed through it. So I just followed the same process, sanding through grits, raising the grain, and then doing my final finish sanding. To finish this level of cedar planter, I'm going to use Walrus Oil's Furniture Finish. I really like this finish and it has a nice matte look to it. It's easy to apply just like the other walrus oils and you just let it set in and dry and then wipe off the excess in the next 24 to 48 hours. To add some contrast to one of the cedar planters, 
I'm going to paint the bottom half white. Now I'm using some chalk finish paint, which to be honest, I don't really like using this paint, but I had it and I didn't want to waste it. So I thought I'd use it on this and um, it took about three coats of paint to get the uh, coverage that I'd like um, on this piece. Once it dried, I peeled the tape off and I really like the look of this. It's a nice contrast with the cedar and the white paint. One thing to keep in mind is that you wanna make sure that blue tape is nice and tight because if the paint bleeds underneath, you're gonna get an uneven line in some spots. Once both planters were completely dry with paint and finish, I added some paste wax just for an extra layer of protection. I'm using clear paste wax and this stuff, you just put it on and then buff it off. When I came up with this idea, I wasn't sure how I was gonna like it, but I'll be honest, I really do dig how these cedar planters look. However, they did take much, much longer than the other two levels of cedar planters to make. And here's a recap of all the tools and supplies that I used for this level of cedar planter. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and got something out of it. These planners are perfect for a desk at work or in the home office, on a mantle or a shelf in your home. And they make really good gifts too. No matter what your skill level is, this project can be done by almost anyone with not a lot of expensive tools. And woodworking always doesn't have to be super complicated to make something that looks nice. Comment down below and let me know which planner you like best. Thanks for watching and until next time, take care.